and welcome to ET Insight, where we get you a 360 degree view of the big picture in business and economy. I am Sridhar Ramakrishnan. Here's what we have for you on the show today. Beautiful monsoon. So just how do good rains really affect the economy at large? Do marketers have a booster dose for the rural economy now that disposal incomes are set to rise? And how the line between the urban and the rural consumer is blurring, at least as far as consumption patterns are concerned. Our top story first. The rain gods have been spanning a lot this year. In fact, between June and September, India received 911 millimeters of rain, which is the highest in three years and way above the 50 average. Now, when it rains, it actually pours for the Indian economy. That's because a good monsoon increases farm output, raises incomes and lowers food prices. And that provides a huge kicker to the Indian economy. Nikhil Shivadas has more. The rain gods have smiled on India and its economic engine is humming in top gear once again. If all goes well, the financial year 2010-11 could bring in pleasant surprises like a bumper crop and overall GDP growth and a rise in industrial production. According to the NCAER, a 1% rise in rainfall can lead to a rise of 0.18% in GDP and 0.17% rise in IIP. I am expecting it will be average figure would be uh, 12 and 13 we will end the year around that. So that will contribute to the GDP. The confidence in India meeting its GDP target comes on the back of a potential increase in industrial and agricultural output. Here it's important to distinguish between the rural economy and the agricultural economy. It's sort of a misconception that the rural economy is agriculture. Agriculture is actually less than 50% of the average income. Uh, most families, most households have at least one or even two members who actually work in urban areas and uh, so there's a lot, lot of dependence on migrant, uh, uh, migrant uh, remittances. In, in addition to that, there is the non-farm uh, economy that's growing around, the, uh, around agriculture. So there's a lot of dependence on that too. Yet, the agricultural sector is not ordinary because it plays a major role in India's economy. Last year, it contributed to 14.6% to the country's gross domestic product and about 10% to its total exports. The economic uh, value add activity of uh, three-fourths of a country happens in the uh, sector of agriculture. Despite the fact that the contribution of agriculture to GDP is not so big as it used to be in the old days, despite that we have as much as you know 72 to 73 percent of the population depending on incomes which come out of agriculture. According to the government's first advance estimates of crop production for the financial year 2011, the total carded food grains production will rise by 10 percent over the previous year and touch 115 million tons. Rice production will rise by 5% to 80 million tons. The overall cereal production will rise by 9% to touch 109 million tons. And the production of pulses will increase by 40% to 6 million tons. The estimates for cash crops like oil seeds, sugarcane and cotton have also been raised due to a bountiful monsoon. A rise in agricultural output is good news because it helps in bringing down food price inflation. I think the rural economy this year is going to be even better than it has been in the past because of the very good monsoons. The area under cultivation has increased. I think the yields will be much better and we expect that uh, the sales in the rural areas will definitely improve this year over last year. Two things will happen now. There's a positive sentiment which will uplift uh, demand. The second thing we believe is the food inflation by October, November is going to come down. And as a result, what will happen is I think that will further, I think, accelerate growth in the rural markets and other categories. Food comprises about 15% in India's wholesale price index. Lower inflation means that there will be more money left in the hands of people. And that in turn will mean a rise in investment demand and consumption, especially in rural India. Farmers' incomes have been better over the last few years. Uh, farmers' propensity to consume uh, farm inputs has also been good, which is also reason why, despite seeing erratic rainfall occasionally here and there, we still have good crops. So I think that's uh, into some kind of a virtuous cycle uh, that we see there. So I think on, on balance it's a very 
positive uh, climate. Once the farmer is there, he gets a better produce, the procurement price gets better by the government of India, he gets more money, he spends that money. So the disposable money in his hand gets bigger and better, which ultimately finds way to durable business or maybe any kind of apparel business. If you have a good monsoon, you have a good crop and harvest season, people have more money in their pocket, it can only help the case of increasing penetration in rural India. The consumer electronic market of India, today they are just below 10%. It means where the, and the, and the market is growing 25% every year. So where is the growth is coming is from rural India. And definitely monsoon, better monsoon, good monsoon is a uh, icing on a cake. According to an NCAER CMCR analysis, food comprises 51.1% of routine expenditure in India, followed by transport, education, clothing, durables, housing, health and others. Ceremonies account for the largest chunk of unusual expenditure. A better monsoon means more disposable income, and that would mean that both routine and unusual expenditure will rise. The monsoons have been very good this time, and uh, the rural disposable incomes are rising and we are seeing a uh, lot of consumptions coming in from the rural side. The psych is that when people feel that yes, they have good income to come up, they start spending money and now we have seen since last uh, say 15-20 days that effect has come, the demand of cement has started growing. I would predict that uh, that's going to be a phenomenal demand coming post the uh, busy season. While uh, the third quarter may not witness all that uh, uh, positive growth, the fourth quarter I would expect uh, to be a very, uh, very bright and very robust uh, uh, growth happening. Much of that growth comes from the rural economy because growth in the urban markets is slowing down. In contrast, the rural sector is growing at 67% annually and already contributes close to 55% of the total consumption in India. And that rate of growth is expected to grow unabated over the next decade. That's perhaps why experts expect that 60% of India Inc's investments will go towards the rural markets over the next few years. So rural India has much to cheer about. But then so does industry. That story is coming up after this short break. Stay with us. This show brought to you by SpiceJet. Get more when you fly with SpiceJet. Reuters, new era, new tools. Log on to in.reuters.com. Sony Bravia, monolithic design. 